Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm going to be doing a demonstration and also sharing some tips and tricks with you about my self tanning routine. So I talked about loving tan and my February favorites and how I was just like addicted to self tanning. So I already finished applying it. So this is it um, after it's set in, but you will see the before and after of like before I put it on and then after. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have three different kinds that I like. Um, I like to use the dark. This is just the regular dark formula. I like to use the ultra dark. So this one is the regular formula, but it's ultra dark, obviously. And then I also have the two hour express and this is just dark. They don't have this one in ultra dark. This one, it actually does work really well. It gets you bronze very quickly. When I went to the Makeup Forever event, I was like, I'm not gonna tan. I'm just gonna be like my regular color. Um, but then I ended up putting this on like right before I left the house So I just put it like on my chest and my arms and my legs and it did bronze me really quickly because when I took a picture later I was like very tan looking um, so this one's really great if you're kind of last minute deciding to tan or I mean, that's really the main reason why you would want to use an express formula. Or if you just want something that's quicker, this one's really good. It gets you a really great color and quickly. And then the other two that I like to use are the dark. This is just the regular formula, not express. So I believe it takes between five and six hours to actually set into your skin or develop before you can take a shower and kind of wash everything off. And then the other one that I like to use is ultra dark. So this one is a few shades darker actually than the dark formula. And this one also dries really, really nicely. Um, so for ultra dark, I don't like to use this one on any of my extremities. So like my hands, feet, or my face. I did put it on my hands one time and it was like way, way, way too dark because your hands and your feet tend to be a lot drier than like your arms and legs and rest of your body. And when I woke up in the morning, when I put ultra dark on my hands, I had like really dark brown mittens on and it just looked really bad. So they do have a medium one also. I didn't notice a lot of color for my skin tone when I use the medium. That's why I like to use dark or ultra dark. Um, if you have really fair skin and you're not trying to get like an ultra intense dark brown tan, um, I would recommend getting the medium one or if you just want something a little bit more subtle and maybe more natural, get the medium one. Today I'm going to use just the um, dark one so that way you guys can see what dark looks like. As you can see, my regular natural skin tone is very fair. There's nothing wrong with having fair skin. If you don't want to be tan, just don't do it. So they do have a tanning mitt. It looks like this. I didn't really care for this one, mainly because it was like not very like flexible and the little seam on it kept kind of scratching me. It was kind of difficult to use. So I ended up using this one. This is a Vita Liberata tanning mitt that I've had. I didn't really like Vita Liberata itself, um, but this one's just like really, I don't know. It just made it a lot easier to kind of get into smaller places using this particular mitt. And then also I just watched Crispy's favorites video and she had Loving Tan in there and she said she used gloves to apply it, which I was like, that's so smart. Why doesn't everybody do that? So I have some gloves here and I will probably use this on my face and see how it works because putting this on my face kind of grosses me out now. I don't really want to do that. I'm going to try out the gloves and see how that works to apply it. And then I also use my moisturizer. You guys know I love the CeraVe moisturizer. So I actually put this all over my face, on my hands, my elbows, knees, and feet before I put the tanning stuff on just because those are drier areas and they will uh, attract or like hold more of the whatever it is in there the bronzing stuff Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started uh, with the demo for you guys So things you're gonna need obviously is your tanner You're gonna need a moisturizer something very lightweight gloves possibly some type of tanning mitt uh, before tanning you want to shower shave exfoliate and Not put on deodorant that I don't put on deodorant because I like to lightly do my underarm area Just so it's not like glowing white and then typically I like to give myself a few hours Before I go somewhere or before I planning on doing something so I like to do it at nighttime and then give myself like an hour or two before I go to bed. Nothing has transferred to my sheets so far, but I also give myself like an hour to let it set before I go to bed. But even then I've never seen anything in my sheets. And then if you want to do like an express or something on your face, I have put on moisturizer mixed with tanner, put it on my face and then done my makeup like 30 minutes after that. And I've never had any problems and the uh, tanner has always worked really well. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the face. Um, the face is optional. 
if you want to tan it, if you don't want to tan it. So I like to tan my face sometimes. I've just recently let all the self tanner come off and I've noticed my skin feels a lot smoother. So I kind of like not having tanner on my face, but things that I've noticed when I use self tanner on my face is that it, like right here in the mustache region, it kind of is more dry right here, so it attracts more tanner on me, I've noticed. So that's something that I'm like not a huge fan of. Also that I get like a, um, I guess when I eat or when I apply lip products and stuff and the tanner comes off, I get like a white ring around my lips where people think I lined my lips with concealer, but I didn't. That's just the way that the tanner came off. Those are just some things to keep in mind if you put tanner on your face that after a few days, probably like four or five days, it'll start to come off and look a little bit uneven and it'll also make your skin look a little bit drier. So it's up to you if you wanna do it. I'm gonna do it today just for the demo. I thought it would be really helpful. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put on the CeraVe moisturizer and I put this on all over my face everywhere. So I'm just using these gloves. These are like regular, I don't know, cheapo, get them at the drugstore kind of gloves. And when I first, the first few times that I put it on my face, I actually just used my bare hands and did it really quickly and then like scrubbed my hands off and it worked. This is a lot safer to do it this way. What I'm going to do is pump a little bit of the Loving Tan Dark Tanning Mousse into my hand. So I have a little bit right here. So I'm gonna add a pump of moisturizer too just to dilute the tanner a little bit. So kind of like that. Oh, it's dripping. Then I'm just gonna mix it together in my hands and apply it. And I like to start on the outer edges of my face. And this stuff does dry really quickly, so you wanna make sure you move fast. And then one more thing to keep in mind, so like you can see right here, I have like a red mark from a blemish that I had a couple weeks ago. Just if you have a lot of like dark marks on your face, just be careful because even though it might not feel drier, it is a little bit drier, so it's gonna attract a little bit more of the tanner and it's gonna kinda dry a little bit darker. So I would just focus more moisturizer on those areas of the face. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the other half of my face right now. Okay, so you can see, well, I think you guys can see, but I can definitely see in a mirror. Um, my face is like substantially bronzer now. So that's gonna kind of develop over the next few hours. Um, and then you can wash off the tanner after. So now what I'm gonna do is just do um, my chest area. I don't wanna be like naked when I film this because that would really weird me out. Um, and I don't own anything strapless because strapless is not my thing. So I'm wearing like a sports bra thing right now, but if I were to film, or if I were to just tan like by myself, like not filming for people, I would be in the buff, I suppose. Um, or just wear like my robe or a towel or something at home. Um, this is just for demonstration purposes only. Now I'm actually going to be using the mitt. And when I use the gloves on my face, I still actually prefer to use a mitt on my face. I just feel like it blends it out a little bit more evenly. I felt like I had to kind of go in and like buff individual places out a lot more. So this is still like my favorite way to do it. Actually what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put a little bit of moisturizer on by itself onto my neck decollete area. I kind of noticed that the tanner does collect like in this little hole right here, whatever that is. Um, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of moisturizer right here. So here I have like, this is not even a full pump. It's like three quarters of a pump. Just because it dries so quickly, I don't like to put too much into the glove at a time. And then I'm just going to put it uh, all over my neck. Okay, so then once that's applied, I like to like hold my neck up. I don't know if it does anything, but I don't want it to like crease in my neck creases, my neck rolls. All right, so now I'm just gonna do some more and I'm gonna stick it underneath my straps. Don't forget to get the back of your neck too. One time I forgot and I, the back of my neck was hella white. So yeah, I'm just gonna add another little pump and do my chest area. I'm not gonna zoom out anymore because I don't want people making fun of me.
Okay, and then I'm all done with like the top chest area. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I do an arm and a hand, um, and then you know that can be applied to like the rest of the body pretty much. So for the hand, this is a lot more challenging to do this area, but what I like to do is put on some moisturizer, rub it in all over. Normally when you get like a spray tan, you are not supposed to use any moisturizer, but this is a little bit different. So you definitely wanna focus on areas that are drier, so like your little knuckle thingies, get it all up in there, right in here and all over. And I'm gonna take a small pump of the tanner and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of my moisturizer. And then I just kinda like rub it together a little bit just so we kinda get a mix going on. And then I'm gonna start on the back of my hand and then blend it towards my fingertips. You wanna make sure you get on the sides and in between the fingers too or else you're gonna have a problem. All up in the fingers, on the sides, up to the cuticle. See, we're looking a little more glowy now, right? I also like to turn my hand over and just lightly do like here. I've gotten real crazy in this area and I've tanned like half my palm. So you just wanna be careful of that. You don't really see it right away, so you just want to kind of be careful around this area. And then whatever excess I have, I'll just kind of rub it right here because I don't really need to be like super tan on the back of my wrist, but you want it to kind of blend in with the rest of you. So you can see quite a good difference here. This is the one we just tanned and this is the one with no tanner on it. Um, so now I'm gonna do the rest of my arm. So I'm trying to make this like really easy for you guys to see and this is like kind of an awkward thing to do on camera. So hopefully this turns out well. Um, but everything you do on your hand, you're gonna do the exact same thing for your feet. So make sure you moisturize them before um, and then mix it with moisturizer also. So now we're gonna do the arm and for the arm I like to add Moisturizer to my elbow. God, look at all these Zoe scratches I have on me. Now for the arm, I'm just gonna take a pump of the Loving Tan. I'm not gonna mix it with moisturizer. I'm gonna put it directly onto my arm. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys how you tan your puppy. Just kidding, and she's out. And I just finished, well I didn't just finish, but I just let my tan set in. So you can see my face and my chest and my neck and my shoulders and my hands are much tanner than they were at the beginning of this video. On my face, like when I, so when I self tan my face, I feel like I got like kind of a, like right in here, like a little bit of a dirty vibe going on. But once you wash off like the tanner at the end of the day or the next morning, whatever it might be, I feel much better about it. So it's just kind of like that first letting it set in the first few hours just feels a little bit weird on my face, also because I'm so used to my face being so pale that it's weird for me to see like more color in my skin. Um, so like I said, it's up to you if you want to self tan your face or not. You can see like right here, I had a dark mark and it kind of made it stand out a little bit more. So I guess that's just depends on who it is and if you want to self tan your face or not. It doesn't look that fantastic when it starts to fade. So just keep that in mind. So I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you have any other questions. I'll try and answer it for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. I feel like I had something else I needed to say.